In today's video, we are going to tell you about the history of ancient Phoenician Empire. So viewers, watch today's video till the end. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for more videos. So let's go to the topic. Carthage was a Phoenician city-state on the coast of North Africa, the site of modern-day Tunis, which period the conflict with Rome known as the Punic Wars was the largest, most affluent and powerful political entity in the Mediterranean. The city was originally known as Carthadest to distinguish it from the old Phoenician city of Utica. Nearby, the Greeks called the city Carchidon and the Romans turned this name into Carthago. Viewers, it was founded at 14 BCE by the legendary Phoenician queen Dido, increased in size after an influx of refugees from the city of Tyre following Alexander the Great's conquests of 332 BCE, and afterwards expanded until it was the seat of the Carthaginian Empire with colonies such as Sabartha along the North African coast in Sicily, Spain, and elsewhere. These would all be lost following the Punic Wars, which elevated Rome to Carthage's former position as the greatest Mediterranean power. Viewers, according to legend, Carthage was founded by the Phoenician queen Eliza, better known as Dido, at 14 BCE. Although Dido's historicity has been challenged, the founding does that to about this time. Dido was allegedly fleeing the tyranny of her brother Pygmalion of Lebanon, landed on the coast of North Africa, and established the city on the high hill later known as the Byrsa. The legend claims that the Berber chieftain who controlled the region toward her sea could have much land as an ox hide would cover. Dido cut a single ox hide into thin strips and lay them end to end around the hill, successfully claiming it for her people. Viewers Dido's reign is described by the Roman poet Virgil and others as impressive, noting how the city grew from the small community on the hill to a grand metropolis. This account and other like it are legendary, but Carthage, which seems to initially have been a minor part on the coast where Phoenician traders stopped to resupply and repair their ships, was clearly a major center of trade by the 4th century BCE. Viewers, the city developed significantly following Alexander's destruction of the great industrial and trade center of Tyre, considered Carthage's mother city in 332 BCE. When Phoenician refugees fled from there to Carthage, these Tyrians arrived with whatever wealthy they had and since many of whom Alexander spared were those rich enough to buy their lives. They landed in the city with considerable means which established Carthage as the new center of Phoenician trade. Viewers, the Carthaginians, the established working relationship with the tribes known as the Mazasili and the Mesili of the North African Barber. Kingdom of Numidia, who will fill the ranks of their military, primarily as formidable cavalry troops from a small town on the coasts. The city grew in size and grandeur, with enormous estates covering miles of acreage. Carthage quickly became the richest and most powerful city in the Mediterranean. Viewers, Carthaginian in government. Formerly a monarchy was a republic based on meritocracy, rule of the elite, by the 4th century BCE. The top position was held by two elected magistrates, known as suffets, who governed in conjunction with a senate of between 200 to 300 members who held the position for life. Laws were passed by an assembly of citizens who would vote on measures proposed by the suffets and senate. The aristocrats lived in palaces, the less affluent in modest but attractive homes, and the lower 
classes in apartments or huts outside the city. Viewers' tribute and tariffs regularly increased the city's wealth on top of the lucrative businesses in maritime trade. The city's harbors were immense, with 220 docks and gleaming columns which rose around it in a half circle in front of towering arcs and buildings ornamented with Greek sculpture. There were two harbors, one for the trade and the other for warships, which operated constantly in supplying, repairing and outfitting vessels. Viewers, the Carthaginian trading ships sell daily to parts all around the Mediterranean Sea, while their navy, supreme in the region, kept them safe and also opened new territories for trade and resources through conquest as the Carthaginians built their empire. That's it. Viewers, in our upcoming video, we will tell you more about this empire. So stay with us.